tell us about the history of this country, the location, the political history, social history, the tribes which came in first, and all that happened. They are very, very important lessons as students or pupils I'd like you to take. Um, there's a saying that a tree without roots will definitely fall. I hope you all agree with me that without the roots, the tree cannot stand. That is how history is. You must know where you are coming from. You must know where you are. Then you definitely know where you are going. Without knowing where you are coming from, there is a likelihood that you are going to repeat the same mistakes that your parents or forefathers did. Another lesson that I'm hoping that we are going to learn from this from this program is the concept of patriotism. Um, I'm, it is unfortunate for me to announce that for the number of times that I've been, or the number of years I've been in this country, the level of patriotism seems not to be uh, at an appreciable level. I'm hoping that when you listen to what your forefathers went through, when they were changed, they changed them, they took them out of this continent to go and toil on farms that today has enriched some other people. We are not here to blame who, but we must know where we are coming from. We must appreciate every effort that has been done by our forefathers. We learn from their mistakes, we learn from their successes. Then tomorrow, we will not repeat those same mistakes. You must be patriotic enough for you to see the sense of staying in this country or going out there to study and come back. There are many who are willing to leave this country and will never want to come back because they think situations in this country, in this country, is so worse that they cannot cope. But one thing that remains a fact is that if you are a Sierra Leonean or you are born in Sierra Leone, you are a Sierra Leonean and you were born in Sierra Leone. It is not like a shirt where you can just remove it and hang it somewhere. It is part of you and it will always be part of you. And one thing you must know also is that nobody can develop your country more than yourself. This is your land, this is your country. Make sure you have some sense of patriotism as you are studying. As you are studying now, the government is spending so much money. The money that the government is spending is coming from taxes taken from farmers, from fishermen, from all manner of persons. That are, uh, I mean, all manner of persons, I must say. This money is being used to buy textbooks for you for free. It's being used to subsidize your fees for you. You are expected that when you grow and you become a responsible person in future, you don't leave this country and forget about this country. Nobody can develop this country more than yourself. That is one key lesson that I want all of us to, to learn from today's program. Um, before I continue, I would like to um, call on stage, I think I made a mistake earlier, Mr. Ishmael Kuruma, who is the senior culture, senior culture, who is from the senior, he is a senior at, from, from the Ministry of Culture and uh, Tourism, if he's here. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Sorry. Yes, so like I'm saying, today's program is very, very important. And I will entreat all of us here to take it very serious. Some of the things you learn here, you will not find them in any textbooks. OCA has done its best to go a long way to know all these things just to impact on us. So please take this very occasion very serious. Um, so, like I said, I do accept the responsibility to be the chairman for this program. And with your cooperation, I hope this program becomes a success. Thank you very much. First on the bill, which is the number four, if you have your program of events. Um, I call on Mr. Stephen Sano to give us an overview of this uh, orientation. Please put your hands together for him. 
Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I think I have to apologize to the chairman because I prefer seeing this standing than sitting. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody here. Uh, we are gathered here for a very important occasion and uh, the essence of it is to see how we can develop the psychosocial thinking of young Sarah Unions. As the chairman was making the statement, uh, he made it very clear that these things that you are going to be taught or that you are going to hear here this morning, you cannot easily find it in most textbooks, right? So as a matter of fact, we deliberately organized this program to see how we can recapture our lost heritage, right? It is not a secret no longer, or even if it's a secret, then it is a very open one now, that uh, we are really, really getting loose of very important heritages that are what's to be maintained. So for this reason, uh, this orientation thing is just a one package that is geared towards recapturing all what we have lost history and cultural wise. Uh, to a very large extent again, this thing is going to be a teaching process and you are expected to learn from it. Okay? Uh, I may want to say, it is also on the uh, program of events there that you have a role play issue. And what are we saying about that? We really want people to listen very keenly and very carefully and see how they can learn something. Okay? Learn something uh, during the process of uh, you doing uh, your role play or whatever, you'll be expected to come and just depict, right? Some things that you have planned here. So uh, in that regard, I don't have to take much of your time, but generally the summary of what I have said is this. This thing is a learning process, and it is deliberately geared towards we Sralunians, we young Sralunians, recapturing our lost heritages. Though they are not completely lost, but we are about to get lost. I think, uh, was it on Tuesday or Wednesday, we had a meeting with somebody from Canada. The person told us in the meeting that uh, people in extreme parts of Canada, Ontario or whatever thing, people are killing themselves. They are committing suicide because of what? They have no identity. And their identity has been lost because of they cannot identify with their history and culture. And we don't want Sierra Leone to be at a, at, a, at a point when everything would have been gone and people started asking, who am I? We don't want that to happen. Okay? So that's why we are deliberately organizing such occasions for you to be informed and for you to be enlightened. That can also strengthen your, 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 your civic education. Because honestly, in Sierra Leone, uh, we don't have correct civic education. Right? The reason being, we don't really know what we should know. So this is just uh, a package designed deliberately to see how we can uh, like, 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 like get this thing done. So please, uh, participants, the students, listen. listen. It's, it's, it's going to be a classroom. All this is going to be a classroom. Yeah? You are going to listen, and at the end, you are, you are expected to come and show something there that you have planned in the form of what, a role play. So I think I wish you uh, good learning and teaching you the facilitators, and uh, I hope we, have, we can all make uh, sense of whatever thing is happening here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Steven Sono. Um, like you said, we are supposed to listen and listen very well. Um, it is very important whilst we are listening, uh, we have been provided with pains, I guess. So you write down. It's very, very important. It's a saying that um, a short pencil is better than a long memory. You are expected to, as much as possible, write some of the things that you hear, especially the dates and special events that did happen to this country some years back. So I'd like to move on to the fifth item, which is on presentations. I'm calling on Mr. Salius to say the education assistant to talk to us about the ge geographical location and the founding of Sierra Leone. Please put your hands together for him as he works. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think I want to start. Sorry. Um, just like what the Chairman and the previous speaker has explained to you, we are here to give a tutorial. By that I mean what we have learned in our office two weeks time ago, 
because we organize a workshop there, a specialist in us on Sierra Leone history and culture. And we decided to use this platform to introduce what we have learned to our ASN members. As the ACA School Network is very, very much important to us. So like in that regard, I want to give a brief presentation on the geography and location of Sierra Leone and the founding of this country. And you all may agree with me that some of what I'm going to explain to you, maybe you know them, but it is good that you always learn them so that they will be part of you. So it's going to be a, a participatory forum where I talk, you talk, rather than me talking alone. So you need to listen because you're going to do for us a whole play for us to test how best you have learned on what we are telling you. So in that regard, Sierra Leone is, who can tell me where we can find Sierra Leone? West coast of Africa. You see, that's why I said some of you will know what we are going to say. You know, thank you for your name. Aliu Tawonka, you can find Sierra Leone on the west coast of Africa. And if you look at the globe, we are in the world map, you see, you can also find this country in north of the equator. And now, even though people are saying that Sierra Leone is a very small country, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yes. Sierra Leone is a very small country. But Sierra Leone has all the characteristics that any country has. Do you believe that? Yes. Fine, thank you. So in that regard, let's know the meters, you know, the area of this country. And who can tell me the square kilometers of this country? Yes. 7,740. 7. Your name? Aubaka. Aubaka, thank you very much. Sierra Leone has 71,740 square kilometers. Now, how many miles? If you look at the left hand bend, the miles, yes? 27,699 square miles. Thank you very much. Now, you have known where Sierra Leone is. Situated on the west coast of Africa, you see the mines, and you see. Then one thing also, Sierra Leone is bordered by two counties, because as we know, even when we leave our homes, you see that um, we have neighbors, and neighbors these are people that are very close to. Is that also? Is that also? Yes. Oh yes. Is that also? Oh yes. That's good. So Sierra Leone also as a county. We have our neighbors. And who can tell me one of our neighbors? Yes. Guinea and Liberia. One of our neighbors. Guinea, Guinea. Thank you very much. And another one? Yes. Liberia. Thank you. You know, you are really learning. So as you can see, Sierra Leone is bothered by two counties. We have Guinea and Liberia. And Guinea is at the north and northeast. And Liberia is at the south and southeast. Thank you. Now, one unique thing about Sierra Leone is that we have variety of ecological and cultural zones. By that I mean is that Sierra Leone have a whole lot of natural areas where it goes for agricultural purposes. We have like the coastal line. And when I say like when I say coastal line, it means the, the the sea areas. And as you can see, some of you are abiding, you know, you see the sea, right? The Atlantic Ocean, is that not so? Yes. And our our own water is full of what? Natural marine resources. We have a lot of natural marine resources. And these marine resources are constituted of good fishes. We have crabs, you know, shrimps. All these are very good that if we can have them, we can produce them and we sell them to the international market. So imagine, we have a lot of fish, some of you know some of our fish, 
Who can name me one fish in this country? Snapper. Uh -huh. Another one? Chinese. Chinese. Bonita. And you have extra of the other two. So you see, so this is how. Have you seen how the value of this country? Yeah. Fine. Yes. Then, having gone through that, see that we have farmland, rainforest, swamp, mangrove. Who can tell me where you can find mangrove in the western area? You know what is mangrove? Yes. These are short, short plants. Sometimes people use them to, to, to fire wood. You know, they call them um, mango wood. Is that also that's how we, we call it mango wood? Find out where. Abadin, eh? Yes. Yes, that's very good, Abadin. But because of human activities, people have, you know, cut these things to build, you know, houses. They have destroyed them. It's called a mango. Then also, one unique thing also about this country is that we have one of the highest mountains in West Africa. I don't can name that mountain. Yes. Bitsuman. Bitsuman. My brother, they are there. They are very good. Bitsuman. So I think the students are more prepared than me. Is that not true? Yes. Is that not true? Yes. That's good. Now, having gone through the geographical location of this country, we are looking at the, the climate and vegetation of Sierra Leone. Now when I say climate, thinking about the temperature, the weather, you know, is it hot, is it cool, you know. And we have seasons. You know, and Sierra Leone, we have two major seasons, and we have another one which make it three. But some of us don't recognize it, but it's very, very much important because some of us just know any season and the right season. There's another season, you know, and we're going to learn about that as well. Now, the rainy season starts when? May to November, because from what I gather, there are other who said maybe it starts around another time, but from May to November, the season, and the dry season? December to May, that's it. And when the Amata season starts? December to February. And who can describe to me how the Amata season looks like? Who wants to try? Cool and um, windy. Dusty and it's blown from the Sahara Desert. Let's give him a bigger. Yes, and it's correct. The Amata season is very cool, you know, dry, dusty. And some of us, we know the impacts of the Amata season when it's concerned. Especially for the ladies, they use the electricity to ensure that their lips are not too dry. You know, and for the men, they don't they fear to laugh during the Amata season. But their mouths not to get right. <laughs> yes. So, one thing also we should learn is that we have our capital city. Who can tell me the capital city of Sierra Leone? Freetown. Freetown. Yeah, that's good. And um, since then, Freetown is situated we are in the coastal peninsula. And why? Because if you come from the coast, the water area, you see the hills, huh? and around that you can find Freetown. And Freetown has a natural harbor, the water key. Some of you know there is also yes. very natural. So you see how Sierra Leone is unique. Why is other counties, you know, they, they, they create their own, but this county we meet it. So you, you imagine, so we have our own natural harbor. And that harbor makes Sierra Leone to be a very, very important country during the colonial era as they use that particular place to sail when they travel, yeah? Then, having gone through that, we have two types of forest. Now we are going to the vegetation. We have the primary and the secondary forest. And the primary forest is very, very dense. When I say dense, I mean what? Peak and crowd, you know? When something goes on culture, you know? Type of, those are the type of forests we have. We have a peak and cloud in forest. Very big. So we have example of such, we have what? The Gola Forest. You know, the Gola Forest. And you can find the Gola Forest around what? 